Hello and welcome to the Emperor's Rejects, your podcast about all things 40k. I'm your host Kuyo with your co-host Foster, y'all, and uh, and Shiki. All right, all right. Today we're going to be talking about two amazing things in uh, 40k right now. We're going to be talking about the new knights because chaos is coming. Chaos is coming, and they got knights. And we're also going to be talking about the state of the meta and uh, the future in the tournament scene. Yeah, it's uh, much like any uh, sort of game, meta is always fluctuating. So we want to talk about that tonight and see where it's going to be going next. All right. I know both of you are now heretical players. Uh, Foss has turned to the dark side and got super excited about these knights. So uh, what do you guys think about the new upcoming Chaos Knights? Well, I'm I'm actually thinking that with the little bit that we know so far, um, they look already pretty powerful. It's going to really depend on how things come out in the end. But, yeah, I, I think the GW is going to be selling a lot of night kits. And I believe they're going to be mirroring what we have in the Imperial Knights with the two different type of households, correct? And the uh, they're equivalent to Free Blades too, the Dread Blades. Uh, hopefully, maybe they'll see what they did wrong with Free Blades and make Dread Blades a bit more usable. Uh, we can hope. I, I like Free Blades, but the only way you ever saw people use them was very rarely if they were gaming with that um being mechanicum so they could take that one burden that they can essentially ignore with their stratagem yeah yeah oh everybody knows what's going to end up coming out is that they're going to you're going to get two negatives and half of a boon that well, is that a possibility. half a boon is going to be great <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it's looking like they're going to be dividing them up almost exactly the same uh they're just going to call them something different cuz you know, we got our Ryu on, on one side and we got to have our Ken on the other. So, mm-hmm. so who's a cool? Uh, the Free Blade, but instead of being awesome, he's terrible. Well, Dread Blade. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Like I said, we, we've got limited amount of information coming out right now, but from the, the minimal amount of information we have, I'm actually pretty excited. Yeah, so I think the two different uh, factions are going to be the... Uh, Iconoclast and the Infernal Households. The Infernals, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one thing that I really want to know about, and I think a lot of people do, are are these knights going to have marks? And are these knights also going to be uh, demonic engines? Because I can really see Infernal Households being uh, demonic engines and getting all of the, the buffs that uh, demon demon engines get in the game. You know, or um, quite probably a easier way to deal with that, and then keep things from getting too zany is um, probably do like the way that Mechanicum and the Mechanicus household interact with them having more synergy. If you ha- have the Infernals ha- be having a way to be demon engines, but not the other Chaos Knights. Yeah. I, I think that's actually where it's going to end up going. And to be honest with you, if they do not have the demon engine rule with titled uh, power such as demonic surge, I, I'm going to be very confused as as to what's happening. I don't expect them to really have marks as such, since even like regular chaos means don't really have marks. Marks are just a distinction to keep you from being able to ally things you want in that one ally in in certain detachments. If there are marks, it's just going to be a, hey, now who has the Nurgle keywords, you can bring it into the Nurgle list. Yeah. But it's not going to probably have any in-game effect. Well, then uh, I think they might swing the uh, pendulum to one one way with them having uh, the demonic rule because <laughs> I would only take them with the demonic rule so they can get buffs from things like the Lord Discord and... and uh, um, other buffs that you can give only demon like uh the greater persist and whatnot oh man i i'm actually to be honest with you i actually really do see them giving the infernal households the demon keyword or the demon engine keyword and then out of nowhere you're going to have lord discordance given plus one to hit you're going to have um aoe versions of the um of rotate ion shields with your masters of possession 
You're going to have plus one to the strength from the greater possessed. It it looks like from the little bit that we have so far, if they get the demonic, uh, the demon engine keyword, that they're going to be very very powerful. Although quite vulnerable to snipers in regard to if they're relying on little squishy men like the. Um... I almost called him an exorcist because his freaking head looks like the exorcist symbol. Uh, Master of the demon. We do. Yes, him. Okay. So you have him running around, but he is very slow and very exposed. One Sanctus and he's out of there. Uh, one Vindicare and he's probably out of there. And let's be honest, what, Im what Imperialist now can't really afford 85 points of protection against that type of strategy? That is fair. That is fair. And I think that if that is something that comes up, I do think that you will see pretty much all Imperial lists out of nowhere putting up, putting aside 85 points and 2 CP to just say, we got to get rid of the Master Possession. Having said that, you know what? If we're going for synergy, and if the, you, they do have marks with the keyword, imagine messing with the tally for either your Nurgle tally man or your Death Guard tally man using a knight as the guy that's getting all your tally up. Ho, 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 ho. I like it. Oh, that'll be nice. That'll be nice. But right now we're, we're, we're speculating. Uh, let's get into the things that we do know. Um, Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the most metal of knowledge. Um, does someone want to look at the infernal household ambition? Yeah, I got you on that one. Um, the Infernal Household Ambition that we're looking at right now is Demonic Surge. Now, Demonic Surge, what you can do with this is for one mortal wound and cost, you get to roll a D3. That D3 is going to allow you to, on a one, add two to your model's move characteristic and add one to advance and charge rolls made for this model. A two will get you just a straight one up to your toughness characteristic. And three will allow you to go ahead and add one strength and one damage to the characteristic for your ranged weapon. This is all massive. And the best part is that if you've got something that you have to have, you can instead suffer D3 mortal wounds. Choose one. And let's be honest, if you're playing a full Chaos Knight list, you just go ahead and do it to all of them because you've got enough wounds to go around. Yeah. And my thought is this, uh, if if their Crusaders stay stay the same, out of nowhere you're going to have Crusaders that are at strength 7, negative 2, and 3 damage every time they wound something. That's one dead Bulgren if you mess up your roll. That's one dead Custode. I don't think this is going to be one of those that you use that stratagem to try and up your game against enemy knights, but it, it's a game changer for quite a few things. Well, I, I think you can use it against enemy knights because, say, you're using the uh, battle cannon, rapid fire battle cannon, you're now going to be wounding them on threes instead of fours. Well, that is true. That is true. And that is given true. that there is the can only use the monsters once per battle round, uh, you can go ahead and you let, let's go with the safe, a fairly conservative assumption and say you can only get a bonus once. Every bonus that the every turn that you're up and the opponent doesn't get rid of you. Your knight is getting better at killing them, and they're getting worse at killing you because once you've got demonic power, you're hurt, hurting them more. Once you've got demonic fortitude, they're hurting you less. Yep. So now you're, it's much easier for you to wound them, but now they have to roll higher to wound you. Well, well, actually, uh, this one doesn't stack. I'm looking at it, and it says it only applies until the next movement phase. Mm. So oh, the, yeah, yeah. So you use it I'm once. I'm clearly blind. <laughs> well, we both wear glasses, so I understand. Yeah, you use it once. You get a buff to one of your knights, and then it goes away until the next turn when you have to use it again or choose a different different ability. Man, I like this. Uh, it's it it basically means you can go ahead and keep hurting yourself to see if you can kill them faster than they help you kill yourself. Hurting yeah. yourself and rolling on a table. That is the most chaos thing I've ever heard of. And at that, least it's not like a huge table, like the old uh, freaking Gift of Chaos thing. That was madness. At least this one, everything is good, and you're not going to be like, well, if you roll a one, your knight turns into a giant Chaos Spawn. I kind of wanted to turn into a Chaos Spawn now. 
<laughs> they, wow. they, if they if they supply the chaos spawn model that size with the knight, the knight be down for that. But now I do have to interject this back to speculation. If they can go ahead and get the the uh, some sort of mark and their demon engines, I think that. And correct me if I'm wrong. But does that not make them a Zinch? If I say they've got the mark of Zinch, does that not make them a Zinch demon? Yes, they do. Well, if you're thinking about using the uh, stratagem to get them deep strike, that doesn't work for things no. out, out of the Demon Codex. I'm looking at Discipline of Zinch, Flickering Flames. Oh, yeah. To be able to... He, to yeah, okay. Yeah, plus one to their, to their uh, damage when they shoot. Which, out of nowhere, what we were talking about earlier with the double Avenger Gatling cannons, Kuyo, now you're wounding other knights on fours if it would work that way. Again, it's speculation. I'm not saying this is real. I'm just saying, if that was a case, you're getting to pump out 24 shots a turn that wound other knights on fours and deal three hit three damage per hit. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That is pretty nice. And even with a rotate... You know, that's that's a lot of damage coming through. So we'll see if it happens or not. But I do like the way that this plays because, again, it's it's one of the, as you said earlier, it's one of the most chaos things ever. I'm going to hurt myself to hurt you more. Well, let's look at the next one uh, with Pact with the Dark Gods, which is uh, pretty close to something we have in the Imperial Knights Codex, where basically um, if one of your knights is killed... It, it doesn't blow up. Uh, roll a d6 on a 4 plus. It comes back to life with d3 wounds. Uh, you can only use the stratagem uh, once per battle. I'm uh, oh, sorry, on the same model once per battle. Yeah. Which, in and of itself, would technically be uh, weaker than the loyalist ones since they, we do not natively have anything that can repair the, uh, the knight. The Knight Titans, except for the Forge World um, Hellrite. However, that leads us into the following stratagem: bind the souls of the defeated. In which you go ahead and uh, let's see. Uh, until the end of the phase, when enemy model is destroyed, a result of an attack made with a melee weapon by the selected model, roll 1d6. On a 4-up, the selected model regains one lost wound. Each model can only regain up to six wounds as a result of the stratagem in the same phase. Oh, your knight, no, your knight just came back. Well, let's go ahead and heal up real quick by eating some guardsmen. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. Now, I do want to point this out as well, just because we did talk about the copy-paste version of this. Um... The difference here, though, is that the Imperial version is tied to a household, whereas the uh, Pact looks like it is more along the lines of that just the any Infernal household can use them, whereas the Imperial version is only for House Tyrannic. Mm -hmm. So that might make a big difference because uh, it now gives you more flexibility in who you run. I remember a lot of uh, Rada players were playing Tyrannus just for that stratagem, not because Tyrannus itself was amazing, but that one stratagem in and of itself made the household amazing. I think we'll have to see really um, like the CP cost for a lot of these stratagems since the biggest thing that makes stratagems so effective for the Imperial versions are that you have a loyal 32 to batter you. and Or uh, if you're going Mechanicus household, you can do the... Uh, Rusty 17. The Rusty 17. The On the other hand, if you're doing the uh, part, the uh, heretical version, the Paradical 17, it's uh, not nearly as cost-effective. Since no. as nice as Red Corsairs are, uh, five Marines aren't going to catch you much. There's no orders to throw around. Their gear is very basic. The you can Warp Smiths won't be able to really do anything for your knights unless they're given something to be able to do that natively it's not nearly as helpful although it does admittedly give you more cp than a, than a loyal 32 would true now here's the other thing though that we need to look at um i actually think that that stratagem is going to be two cp um the one upside for the imperial version is that you can keep doing it whereas this one very specifically says 
It cannot be used on the same model more than once per battle. Which is pretty big, but as any any person who's ever fought a knight knows, if even just the knight being on the table for one more round or you having to pour more firepower into it to take it away, that's in and of itself more than worth that time. They literally swing games. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's go ahead and look at the Iconoclast Household Ambition. Uh, conquerors without mercy. If a model with this ambition made a charge move, was charged to perform a heroic intervention, add one to the model's attack characteristic until the end of the turn. And the armor penetration characteristics of this melee weapon, uh, the model's equipped with is approved by one until the end of the turn. In addition, when an enemy unit fails a morale test within 12 of any model with this ambition, one additional model flees uh, from that unit. What do you guys think? I think House Griffith wants its uh, better trait back. Well, they can't have it because our war dog is going to make good use of it. Yeah, I was going to say, I think this trait is going to be amazing for Warglaves. Mm-hmm. Or whatever they're going to call their version of Warglaves. Yeah. I think that's going to... Oh, man, one of the things I love about Warglaves is you get eight attacks with the chain sweep. But on this one, you're getting ten on that charge and it's it's an and every and time the AP is better the AP is better and a failed morale test out of nowhere means that you've got an additional guardsman or marine or whatever running away from you you know it's so it's really if you're sending war dogs to go kill guardsmen your something's gone wrong but hey at least you know they'll die oh and that for me is the big thing is can I, if if their warglaves operate the same way, where you can, they've got the assault meltas, running up, melting the thing you need to melt it, and then charging into a group of guardsmen, you're you're going to be spreading a lot of damage around, and that's going to be pretty good. Um, it's also going to really change the way that I think gallants work out, or sorry, rampagers, I think is what they call them. Is that their version? Um. Yes, the rampager, a frenzied close combat butcher. Um, I think that's going to be a pretty big deal. Um, you know, stomp stomping at I want to say negative three now. Is is nothing to nothing to scoff at, and you'll be getting eighteen stomps. Those guys. If, if everything is one-to-one. Um, you know, it, it is a little bit... It does suck that you lose out on the... Everybody is considered a character for their ability to stomp on... I mean, uh, not stomp. For their ability to heroically intervene. But I think a lot of times, knights don't often, unless you've got things like Burning Descent or something else, or Wolfen jumping out of ruins at you or something... I think oftentimes the knights are the one making the charge just because they are so fast. And there's going to be in a chaos list, you're far less likely to have things that a knight's going to be able to heroically intervene to help save. Like, yeah. Your five man rain squad's probably not not worth diverting your knight away from whatever it's doing. And now, admittedly, if you're playing a uh, knight and demon list, uh, maybe you want to back up your twenty-man plague bear unit just to ha- help get get them back to doing uh, sitting on the objective safely. Yeah. But beyond hedge cases, it, it, the knights are fi- find much more use being just offensive. I like it a lot. Um, I would real. I really want to see what the others do, but I think this is gonna. As I said earlier, I think it's gonna make warglaves amazing on their side. And. I know you all said I was wrong, but I, I, I'm i still going to do this 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 brash prediction. I don't think they're going to have unique household abilities. I think what we've previewed right now are going to be generic household abilities, and each household isn't going to have one. That's just me. That's just how I see it right now. I think uh, all... You may, you may be right, because there's no indication of anything unique. It's just going to be the subdivisions of iconoclast and infernal yeah i think I would, you, you pick iconoclast 
I find that, I would find that really weird, to be honest with you. Well, I, I think it's just going to be like, oh, you paint it in whatever color you want to, or 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 they're going to have established houses, but they're just all going to fall into one or two uh, abilities. That's why they're giving us these uh, basically house traits. I could also see them, considering uh, GW has a long history of basically going, well, these, uh, for example, with the Chaos Legions, uh, Legions fell apart, there's not really Legions, they're all Renegades now, before eventually having to going, oh, there's Legions again, you can have your Legion traits, we'll give them to you. We may be in a current state with the Chaos Knights, who's like, oh, all the households that joined basically falling apart, they're more like a greater household they're all iconoclasts so as opposed to individuals yeah i mean this is the very first uh chaos book i mean the official chaos knights codex so. yeah, as opposed to the baby decks like oh look chaos gets its knights but they don't really get much beyond their, oh we get like what one stratagem and oh it's so cute and so. And then this also will appease imperial players who are mad that chaos players are just getting paste and copy of their decks the difference will be chaos it doesn't have individual traits it's either one or two and then you can specialize those uh those units with different stratagems and things of, of those sorts so that's that's how i'm feeling about it right now until we get more information that's that's how i see it which actually thinking on it could be why um in the grand scheme of whatever grand scheme you want to go with the parad- the piratical CP farm would be for it gives you more than the imperial version because it looks like the uh, chaos knights are going to be far more CP hungry than the already CP hungry loyalist knights because mm-hmm. you're already spending at least a, at least a couple before the battle even starts and you're going to spend even more when it, when it's actually going. That's true because the the uh, chaos households. They also have stratagems that are not like the stratagem of giving a warlord trait or a relic, which, to be honest with you, I think they're going to have that anyway. But you also can go ahead and give them vows. The vows seem pretty cool. I'm a Space Wolves player, part, so we love our sagas. The vows are a lot like the old deeds of legend for, for Space Wolves, where you were looking to kind of cement your deed by making a vow at the beginning of the game to do something. It's about time Chaos started stealing some things from the wolves as they kept stealing our rules for additions. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but I really like Vow of Dominant. Um, it is oh, one I know those... you like being dominated. No, I like to be the dominant one. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay. That's not what I heard. Well, ears are working as good as your eyes. Oh! That was a callback, folks. Callback. <laughs> No, I really like this. At the beginning of the game, uh, you select one Iconoclast household model from your army and declare a vow of dominant. Uh, any unmodified wound rolls against that, that model of one, two, or three always fail. Irrespective of any abilities that weapon or the model making that attack may have. So, Blood Angels, get out of here. But you may not give it the vow of carnage or vow of the Beast Slayer strategy. Beast Slayer. That sounds familiar. Yeah, this is this is this is crap, crap. Worst strategy ever, because uh, my Manticores are gonna hate having to fight a Chaos Knight and only wounding on fours. Suck it. Well, four or five and seven. Well, yeah, four plus. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to everyone else trying to hurt a knight. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the shadow sword that I'm going to add to my list also is going to uh, hate this very much. Hey, I heard that you get to reroll against Titanic. Uh oh, it's two again. Actually, <laughs> I, I need to I need to reread. I don't the actually think that the uh, shadow sword is going to have much more trouble. There's you're going to have a few more fails, but you still do so much damage; it's hardly going to matter. True, but if you really think about it from a statistical point of view, you go from an 87% chance of every hit wounding down to a 50% chance before re-rolls. Well, I, I need to take a look at the rule to see if you even get re-rolls uh, because 
it's, it's something Nick picky, but you have to look at how rerolls are wor worded. If a rerolls is worded that you get to reroll fails on things like this, you don't get to reroll it. it because the yeah, mod reroll or reroll always fail. Well, no, it's because the mod oh, always fails. Yeah. Well, the modifier happens before reroll. Remember? No, well, but sorry. what is a modifier happens after, after the, yeah. a, a modifier yeah. happens after a reroll. So your point to reroll it is already done. Yeah. But what it, but yeah, I was gonna say it says unmodified wound roll. So yeah. I don't think you would get your reroll on that. Yeah, I yeah, that's what I'm saying. I have to look at uh uh the shadow sword to see if it's you reroll fails or you can reroll all. Because if you look at some some abilities, they say you can reroll all dice. And if that's the case, you can reroll it even if you would have naturally pa passed it. Oh, man. So it, it's specific wording if you look at uh, certain abilities. Um, wow, that's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly certain you will see that quite a bit going in, into... Uh... It is. You can reroll failed wounds when targeting titanic units with this weapon. So, so I would not get rerolled. Yeah. Yes, it... yeah. Oof. Oof. No? I, I think that... ultimately a Shadow Sword will still do its job. It'll just do it slightly less overwhelmingly. Or I'll just shoot at something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, say, I, I'm fairly certain you'll have other knights to shoot at. But, I mean, the Shadow Sword will still have a place. It's it's one of those that, let's face it, just because a Knight's Codex is coming out for Chaos doesn't mean all the Loyalist Knights get packed up and put away for something. No, 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 no. Shadow Sword is going home now. It was coming out off the bench. Now it's going back on the bench. Going into the trash can. Well, that's how I feel about my Greyhound. I mean, you can always just replace the uh, Shadow with more Guardsmen. No. More Guardsmen. Come on. More Guardsmen usually does fix the problem. Hey, hey. You, need, you just need to play Makara's Volker. Volker. There you go. Fine. But <laughs> this is one problem that uh, more Guardsmen won't help with. The Vow of Carnage. And this brings me back to some of my favorite abilities in 40k. Uh, use this strategy before the battle. Select one Iconoclast household model from your army and declare a vow of carnage. Until the end of the battle, keep a tally of enemy models destroyed as a result of attacks made by this model, adding one to this model's attack characteristic for every 10 models destroyed. This is going to be insane. Uh, you Especially get against uh, Swarm Nidlis or, uh, or Heavy Infantry Guard. You orcs. know who's been doing well is Orcs. Yeah. Not <laughs> this is ridiculous uh, this brings me back to the, the tally man days of 5th edition I want to kill as much as possible to grow my strength like I love this so much well if they do get marks and you can be Nurgle you might be able to do have this also benefit the tally for your demons Ugh. now something that I did find interesting and it's literally right underneath it um, their version of the um, Ionic Bulwark is uh, is a relic. It's not a warlord trait. Hmm. Which, to, to be fair, it's there's a point where warlord traits and relics really just start to overlap. It's still one guy gets this, and nobody else. Yeah, no, I, just, I thought it, it, was it depends. It depends on what their. It depends on how the relic, relics are. I'm sure they'll be fine. It'll be... It, at least we'll have one guy with four up. That's oh. good. So, But that that does mean something that this is a, a Kino class relic and the Infernal Houses won't get it. Yeah. yeah. That, that is the big thing, is that Infernals won't get access to that, which actually makes me think even more to make up for it, they may actually be demon engines, which will allow yeah, them to be... I by the master possession. I, I think this this just does lead more to the whole their demon engines uh because they didn't want them to get a three up so they just decided to not give them the relic in the first place yep <laughs> calling it demon engine army let's go I'm excited I don't know although uh, let's see hmm. if they do get that let me just see if that works could continue I'm, I'm looking something up and it's it's going to be interesting what we see over the next couple of days. I mean, it is uh, it is America's birthday uh, tomorrow, so happy birthday, America! 
or if you watch this at some other time, it was America's birthday tomorrow. So we're probably not going to get anything uh, here anytime soon for new information, probably until next week. Um, we'll probably get more um, of the hilarious Primaris Lieutenant blog. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm hoping for it. I'm, I'm seeing some cool stuff that we might be talking about here in the near future. Well, good news is uh, if there is uh, some synergy between Demon, between uh, Chaos and the Chaos Knights, at least the Master Possession won't be able to heal it. So, hey, there's that. <laughs> but, yeah, it's this is from what I've seen so far, it's, it's looking pretty awesome. Um, a lot of people seem really excited about it, so much so that they actually... Also, uh, Cursed Earth would not work on them anyway. No, why not? Uh, requires Legion Demon units, and uh, Chaos Knights are not part of Legion. Fair enough. Shows you how often I use a Master of Possession. To be fair, unless you have a very specific plan for them, they're slow and mostly worse than a Sorcerer, so why would you? Now, uh, can you look real quick for me um, so I don't have to go looking for it? Greater Possessed, will that work for them? Uh, no. Really? Because it affects mar uh, mark and le uh, mark marked Legion demon units. Oh, oh, this Legion. Okay, well then I guess them... Being a uh, demon having issue? said that, uh, the um, demon version of that, as in from like Heralds of Slanesh or Heralds of Nurgle, will affect them if they have the if they have the uh, mark. Okay, because I was just looking in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oddly enough, the people that you would expect to actually be messing with uh, heretical technology can't buff the heretical technology, but you know, uh, entities of the warp. They got you covered, bro. <laughs> Sounds as right. Long as, as long as they got that stuff going on, yeah. Like I said, it's it's going to be good stuff. I'm looking forward to, to seeing how it all works out. And if, any, and if nothing, we're getting beautiful, beautiful models because all of the uh, Chaos Knights look immaculate. They, look, they make me so sad. I don't have the budget for for them right now. Uh, I'm just going to have to continue being the one guy that's not playing any Super Heavies. Go me. Go find me for Sheiky Incoming. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking right now at the uh, the Rampager art the, of the white and red Rampager. And, yeah, I'm like, oh, man. Uh, if only my gallants could look like that with less spikes. No, you need more spikes. <laughs> I just... There's something about that that power fist that they have that just gives me shivers. It just spikes. So cool. I mean, spikes make everything better and everything worse when assembling. Oh, I'm gonna bleed so much. <laughs> that is true. Well, speaking of bleeding, let's talk about how we're gonna make our opponents bleed with our discussion on the meta, which we will have coming up next. all of the pie and we are back and we're going to be talking about competitive 40k and yeah. talk about the meta and for people who don't know who the meta is it's just a generic term used in competitive gaming basically talking about the most uh used uh strategies and uh the ebb and flow of the game, what's powerful, what's weak, and uh, what you need to be bringing to be the best at it. Now, one of the downsides to this idea of a meta, though, is that for some people, it completely stifles creativity because people want to win and they're not willing to take a chance that they will not win. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a self uh, defeating prophecy. You get stuck in a box of, okay, these things are good, and then you think, oh, these are the only things that are good, and I have to be able to beat these things or play with these things to to function in the game system. And then you stop looking at the rest of the books out there, the rest of the units, the other hundred of different options you have to pick. It is how you have things like 
oh, everyone notices conscripts, but Spaceless comes out, and they're like, oh, Wolfen, eh, eh, Wolfen are bad. Wolfen are bad. Yeah. Wolfen can't do anything for you. Wolfen are bad. But this also creates instances where you find some people getting completely caught off guard by what is considered a quote-unquote bad list that ultimately demolishes all of its competition because it goes out of its way to be counter-meta, which is what you'll find a lot of uh, really good players will try to find what will defeat the current meta and move forward with that. Yeah, so something we've been seeing a lot is uh, you'll look at a, a GT winner or a major winner and be like, okay, well, that's a good list, that's a good list, and then it's a list that you had no clue uh, would do so well. And those things are outside of the meta. So um, it also depends on the caliber of the player. That's a big point of it. But when people get stuck into these list-building roots, uh, they only think, well, sorry, ruts, they only think about, okay, this is what I've been told is good. This is what I've been told we need to play. Uh, one good example was uh, at the Boise Cup, a Blood Angels player came in second. And if you would have asked anyone two weeks ago, they would have told you that Blood Angels uh, are unplayable. Boy, the only time you take a Blood Angel group is if you're going to be bringing that small battalion with three five-man scouts and the two Blood Angels smash captains. It's the only way to play them. It's the only way. And this guy literally brought a straight Blood Angels army. Uh, I was describing it. It looked like he picked up a Blood Angels start collecting box and uh, won a, <laughs> came in second place into a major. I, I love this list as well. It literally only has one Smash Captain. Now, granted, it's got five five-man groups of, of scouts with uh, one Storm Bolter and the Combat Knives. But to be honest mm -hmm. with you, Scouts are the most cost efficient. Uh, well, they're, they're the lowest costing troop in the codex, so it makes sense that you would All take firepower them. marines, none of the investment exactly. And especially for the Blood Angel scouts with their combat knives, because they're strength four, they oddly enough can wound knights on fives on that first round of combat if they for some reason lost their minds and decide to charge a knight. Hey, sometimes. You need to go death or glory, and hey, it's that or succumb to the black rage. So have at him. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Another example that we've been seeing recently uh, have been Tao. I can promise you this. I can promise you there were so many upset Tao players at the beginning of the season. They were saying that Tao could not compete in ITC, and Tao have been winning GTs left and right. Like, Tao have been in the top five in the last probably six tournaments I've looked at. But it's not I so actually, like. I mean, for the greater good, is still great against anyone trying to assault. Well, and there's a lot more assault with, uh, like, Chaos List now going for a triple disco. Yep. Well, it's funny, because I actually got into a discussion with a Tao player towards the middle of, of when 8th has, has been going on. Uh, ITC talk about how bad magic boxes are for Tau. They're the worst thing ever. Completely unfair. Why can't I shoot into it? I just why can't I demolish the building? But it doesn't seem to matter for the good Tau player because they'll just sit back and still shoot you until there's nothing left. Yeah, I think it's what you said earlier. Um, it really depends on who who is bringing what to this list. And who is playing it? You know, you and I have both seen really good generals um, rocking it out with lists that you just don't think would work, and they they make it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can have the scrub who spent, you know, five thousand dollars on their army, getting the best meta army of the day, and they have no idea what they're doing with it, and it just it that's what it becomes. It becomes what? a I don't. How know. do you know that's how much I spent? <laughs> Nice. Much like Malkador, Malkador, I have eyes everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, me personally, I, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, net listing. I try not to do it. I try to do my own creative thing. If you net list, that's on you. But don't just get stuck in this whole idea of these are the only things that are good. Like in 8th edition right now, 
almost any list can compete. Yes, you're going to have your bad matchups of things that uh, is going to be tough for you to win. But almost any list can compete. And if you're competent with what you're playing, you can strounge out some points. You can probably pay for a tie. Yeah. Well, to do that, let's go ahead and let's look at this this Blood Angels list real quick. Because I think this is important to look at. Because, again, a lot of people didn't see the synergy in Blood Angels list. I can almost guarantee you at the next GT, we're going to see some Blood Angels lists out of nowhere. Because it just, once you break down the components of this, it's like, wow, I didn't realize you could do that. So I've got the list pulled up, and we have the Sanguinor, a Chaplain Jump Pack with one Power Fist, a Librarian Jump Pack, four Sword, three groups of Scouts with the Storm Bolter, then another Battalion with the Sanguinary Priest with Jump Pack from the Index, Captain with Jump Pack, Storm Shield Thunder Hammer, two Scout Infiltrators, which again, I heard infiltrators are unplayable and unusable. Librarian. Hear that you? No, I was no. I was very discouraged mm -hmm. with the ones that I brought, but I don't think they're unplayable. I just think they're very expensive for what they. Do. Um, but Sanguinary Ancient Death Company with fifteen Death Company with five Thunder Hammers and ten Chain Swords, and then ten Sanguinary Guard with eight Blade and Carmen, two Power Fist. And then 85 points set off for opposition requisition for your assassin. But I think we did the math on this. At some point, you know, if you've got all your guys put together, that death company squad is putting out what what do we say? Like 25 attacks that are Thunder Hammers, Kuya? Wait, say that again. If you've got all your buffs put together on your death company, you can get 25 attacks if I remember right. I believe it was something like that, yeah. Yeah, and I think that if they're next to, I want to say it's the Sanguinary Priest, they get plus one strength, and that puts their Thunder Hammers at strength 10, which means that if they charge a knight, they're wounding the knight on twos. Ridiculous. Yeah, but it's something that, that we've all heard that Blood Angels cannot be competitive on their own, and yet, second place... Only being beaten by orcs. Well, Which... you see, while red may be faster, greener is meaner. That is true. And the funny thing is, that orc list actually ran Evil Suns, so they were also red. <laughs> and, dun, dun, dun. and just just to clarify, it didn't actually get beaten by orcs. It had more battle points. The, that list went 5-0. and zero. Yeah. Sorry. But yeah, I mean, it's Five and zero with that list, that, that's something we would have never heard of. You know? Because there's not a lot of opportunity for, you know, changing what you're doing, and a lot of people get stuck in the, the rut. I'm also looking at the Desert Rat GT with uh, that fourth place High Fleet Kraken uh, list that ran just a ton of Termagants and Gene Stealers and even had a grounded hive tyrant. If if you aren't prepared to get those gaunts off the objectives, you need your flamers, you need your rapid fire weapons. If you don't have them, you can't get them in the position, you're not going to slaughter them. They don't care about morale. Exactly. Well, pretty much. I think ultimately one of the things that because I think that we talked about this during our last battle report, I think that one of the things that I at least would like to see from the 40k community is willing to branch out on what what they know is good, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. You know, because what was it? Last GT you went to, people, I, I, I literally got to listen to some of your conversations and it seemed like people didn't even know what a manticore was. Like they've never seen one in their life. Like it's some sort of mythical, well, I guess it is a mythical creature, but you know <laughs> what I mean. Yeah. My How something so traumatizing to every single list I've ever played is just like unheard of to people. It's just mind boggling to me. Yeah. Yeah. M wow. Most people have no clue what the Manticore does because <laughs> they look at the Basilisk because they've been told that the Basilisk is the artillery piece to take and they gloss over all the other options when even just from a mathematical standpoint, the Manticore is better. Like, just, just if you just look at math, it's a better choice. But because people know big 
winning a GT list has used it, people don't realize it is better. And sometimes they'll look and like, okay, well, why don't people pick this? Oh, they see, they see the can only fire it four times. Not thinking the game only ever runs like maybe six six turns. Uh, four limit is not a limit. Yeah, I mean, or if you really think about it too, at that point, if your manticores have not destroyed what they needed to destroy, you probably weren't going to kill it anyway. Yeah. Now, I do want to make a note here for for our viewers. Please do not assume that this that what we're talking about here about looking at at different things for the meta. Please do not assume that if a unit is just you know it's bad, it's in there as not a joke unit, but as a as a trap unit that we're telling you go out and play with these. You'll do well. That's not what we're saying. Please do not dust off your three death strike missiles and hey. curse the rejects hey. for what I you, mean. you never know. Death strikes might put in some work. <laughs> <laughs> if you aren't careful, like, oh look, who I'm I'm playing all I'm gonna be playing custodians, I'm gonna be hiding up in this corner here. You can't get me. I'm on the objective. Three death strikes, all these mortal wounds. <laughs> <laughs> they will have their place somewhere. Somewhere. Someday the death strikes will have their day. Yeah, an apocalypse. Uh and if anything, Go go open up your Forge World book. Take a look at those units. There are some amazing units in there that no one knows of. Yeah, I'm I'm actually looking at trying to find a way to convert me up some Scorpiuses. Cause firing so many times is is very silly. Cause when you think of Forge World, all anybody thinks about is the Derradeo right now, which is very good, do not get me wrong. Which people didn't realize until what last month, two months ago. Yeah, until somebody brought it out into the open. Hey, uh, it's hard to pull people away from their Doritos. I do like Doritos. Doritos is what built my body. I think the main issue is that Forge World has a very hit or miss right now. You have a lot of units that are hidden gems, but a lot that are legitimately just bad or horrifically overcosted. True. Yeah. Like, poor greater, greater demons. <laughs> why, why is Alphabet? 1500 points i don't get it okay i've said my piece about that before <laughs> poor alphabet but we've also talked about how out of nowhere things that you did like what was it a couple months ago we we were talking about the psychera and venator doing so well mm -hmm. um and I, I literally had to look it up because i had no idea what it did mm, that's true yeah yeah, I think that there, are, as you said, there are some units in there that have some fantastic synergy, and there are other units that, at the moment, just, I don't know why you would take it. Um, I guess we're going to have to see with the um, Primaris Executioner. Online, I've seen a lot of people thinking it's probably going to be overcosted, but it looks fairly heavily, heavily armed and has the... Becoming more and more ubiquitous. If it stands still, it fires twice. So I think it may actually be pr pretty beastly if people don't treat it with some level of respect. I I'm actually considering only living with one kidney for the rest of my life to get three of them and Gulliman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I'm going to deal with Chaos Knights. Just shooting a whole bunch of times laser destroyers at them get too close to me, I don't care. I'm going to fly on top of this building and shoot you still. Which is another thing that I've, I've noticed that some people don't do is their flyers. You can go on top of buildings, if I remember correctly. Although at some point I do hope that gets I almost said hot fixed, FAQ'd. There are certain things that just flat shouldn't be able to stay up there. But they're hover Without other things being able to uh, charge them. Yeah, that is, that is annoying for my, my melee army is when Literally, your base is so big that you can just stand on top of the entire top of the building and I can't get within one inch of you. Well, that's why Titans have that... Um, I can't remember if it's a household rule or if it's a generic Titan rule where the Titan can charge into a unit that's on a higher floor as long as it can get within a certain horizontal and vertical distance. I do believe that's a strategy. Yeah. Uh, where... I think more things need something like that. 
just so the people that rely on assault don't get shafted by someone being three floors up so much. Yeah. I've always kind of find it funny where it's like, I just need to stab your guy underneath from below. I can't. I actually ran into this with uh, one of Richard's Vindicare Vindicare assassins being on a tower that mathematically I couldn't ever charge up and being a tower, I couldn't climb it. So, yeah, that was that I've had that happen to me, too, where it's like, oh, I really want to get up to these guys up on the very top. But he has spaced them out in such a way that that is impossible. So I guess I'll just try to bolter you off of the top with my melee army and hope for the best. Hope is the first step on the road to disappointment. But I think that because what we're looking at now is the meta, I I think that's going to be one of those that, end of the day, it has to be taken into account um, that I think they're going to shake it up because of your inability to effectively charge them. And I do think it's interesting. The more terrain actually is better for them because they can hop from building to building and say my Wolfen will have to run down flights of stairs to go back up flights of stairs for it to just hop back over between the tops. So, like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how these these new uh, units shake things up. In an addition that's already becoming more and more shooting focused, it's going to push it further in that direction. I would agree with that. You know, why bring something that you ultimately cannot attack something with? Because at that point, it's just a waste of point. Mm-hmm. But yeah, meta is looking good. You know, I, I think it's a, got a nice balance at the moment, but it always needs to be shifting, in my opinion, so that things don't get stale. Uh, one of the things I've heard in the past about the big complaints is ultimately why why is the meta not changing i i've yet to see aside from orcs and tau consistently doing super well you know just going over to 40k stats and i'm seeing different different top lists essentially outside of orcs seems to always be there for most of them Mm -hmm. so it's good stuff ever changing ever growing All right. Well, this is going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe and uh, leave us some comments on your thoughts about the episode. You guys like to add anything? Mm, No, I think I'm pretty good. Uh, Looking forward to Saturday to get a couple games in. Emperor protects, y'all. All right. As he said, the Emperor protects. Thanks for watching.